Some of the biggest names in professional bowling have won a junior gold championship. Sean Rash, Stephanie Johnson, Janet Wachowski, and Marshall Kent, to name a few. Will we see another future winner this year? Find out right now from Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio is the host city for great bowling this summer. Today it's the U-20 Junior Gold Championships. Now let's meet our four finalists. Now let's meet the athletes competing for the 2017 Junior Gold Championships in the under 20 division. First in the girls division, from Worcester, Ohio, Allie Leyendecker. And from Lumberton, Texas, Caitlin Johnson. And in the boys division, from Greenville, South Carolina, David Hooper. And from Palmdale, California, Wesley Lowe, Jr. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Great Bowling on CBS Sports Network. Dave Ryan alongside Marshall Holman, my Hall of Fame broadcast partner. So today, it's the U-20 Junior Gold. We saw some amazing bowling as well with the U-15. Let's go back in your career now. You're 20 years old, same age as our, some of our bowlers here today. You won your first career title. What are your memories of that event? Well, it was total elation. And, you know, you never know if you can win until you do. And, and once it happened, you know, I was hungry for more. And uh, it, it really jump-started my career. So for these young people out here today, it's a very important day for them. We saw some history earlier this summer on CBS Sports Network. Solomon Solomon, the U15, first ever boy to repeat as champion, had a near 300 game in his second game. How about more history today? What do you think? I hope so. I'm ready for it. I mean, you know, it, it, it really makes it more fun for us when, the, when they do extraordinary things. And, and I wouldn't be surprised to see something extraordinary in the next couple of hours. We can't wait on CBS Sports Network. U20 Junior Goal from just outside Cleveland will crown two champions. That's all coming your way next on CBS Sports Network. Ready to bowl here in Wycliffe, Ohio. Allie Leyendecker. Caitlin Johnson head-to-head. -head. U-20 championship. Caitlin's 18 years old. Sophomore to be at Weber International. At Powerhouse Program down in Babson Park, Florida. Just coming off of ankle surgery just just a couple of months ago so uh, she says it's a little bit sore but doesn't affect her bowling first shot for Kaylin in the pocket leaves the 10 pin good opening shot we have seen many many solid 10 pins in the telecast here at Wycliffe. Pretty deliberate player. She's taking her time. Going to set herself with her spare ball. And no problem. Makes a good spare. Here's our line decker. 16 years old from Worcester, Ohio. Bowls for the Worcester High Generals. And her mom, Tracy, is the head coach. Excellent. Great start for Allie. Hometown is about 55 miles from here, so she has lots of friends and family. Yeah, she's play, playing a home game. Of your 22 titles, any one in Medford? That would be no. Oh. Lava lanes. Well, they, they didn't start going to Lava Lanes till, till I was pretty well uh, I see. insignificant. It didn't happen in the prime. Yeah. No. Allie. That was left. Very fortunate. Pulls the ball left. Gets the Brooklyn strike. Comes back with a kind of a little sheepish smile. But uh, wasn't where she was trying to throw the ball, but uh, she's not giving it back. Ball just never was projected out to her target. The first ball she threw in the first frame was excellent. This one, fortunate. So back to Caitlin here. She's actually a high school junior when she broke her ankle, sliding into home plate. Playing softball. softball game for her high school team. 
She said now she's pretty close 100%. Looks great on that shot. Great Good shot. to see her recovering from that surgical procedure. Our VPA oil pattern today. Okay, we've got the 41 foot pattern. It's a sport pattern. The volume is medium. You see the concentration of oil here in the front of the lanes, a little bit in the center, drier on the outsides. It gives you a little bit of room to the to the to pull the ball and to and to send it to swing the ball, but not a lot. Very competitive condition. We don't look for the scores to be exceptionally high. However, we were we were surprised by uh, by Mr. Salama. What a fantastic run. Near 300 game. And he made history. Maybe more history. U20. He's got a hurry. Boys and girls. What a shot. Power strike. Power strike from Johnson. And evens this match up. That's a great answer to sitting on the bench and watching your, your opponent throw a, a crossover strike at you. Just come right back up and go crash, crash. Three in a row. Much better trajectory on this shot. Bound around the 12 board, out to about eight. Coming back in, high flush. All 10 pins react. And the last shot that Allie threw on the left-hand lane was just an errant delivery. She'll project the ball further to the right. It comes back, and she leaves the soft 10. Two-time team Masters national champion. 2015 in this year. Two-time Ohio player of the year. Spare ball. Nicely done. Our future for the sport road to the finals. And our bracket to see how these two great young bowlers got this far. Well, they both bowled very well in their semifinal match. Line Decker shooting 440 and Johnson shooting 423. They're off to good starts today. Two game total of pinfall here and a 10 pin again. Wow. Such a good shot. I know that she loved it off her hand. She was watching it, admiring it as it was turning into the pocket. And the 10 pin just laughs at her. We'll take a look at that pesky six pin, the second to your right. It's going to go around the bottom of the 10 pin. And it sometimes it just doesn't seem fair. Needs to pick it up to keep a 10 pin deficit. Whoa. Just nudges the 10 pin. Good job there from Caitlin to take care of business. And stay clean. Keep us very close here. Two game total pinfall match. Junior Gold Championships tournament format. 26 games of qualifying, then into double elimination match play. Two game total pinfall matches in the championship as well. It gives whoever maybe in a little bit of a deficit the first game, a chance to come back. And we've seen some great comebacks. Jennifer Laredo. Yeah, that certainly comes to mind. 51 pins down with seven to go. U15, seven unbelievable. frames. Unbelievable. Yeah. And one going away in the end. That was a little left off her hand. It pushes, just leaving the four pin. She'll be satisfied with that. You can see this ball, it never got far enough to the right. Push, push, push. Just the, just the four. Could have been a four nine. It could have been it, just a little bit slower. It would have been really bad. It's important to project the ball down the lane. And it's important to keep your speed constant because if you, you start messing with your speed, a little fast, a little slow, changes your break point dramatically. Back to Allie Leindecker. All 10 down, some help on the seventh pin. 
Seven pin the last to go. You know, as a bowler, when you see your ball going in the half pocket position like this, well, watch this shot. It's going to be half pocket. All you're watching is a 10 pin. You're not even considering the seven pin because you you assume it's going to fall over. But the seven pin this time was the last to go, and just barely. <laughs> 16 years old. Mindecker Johnson head to head. U20 girls junior gold championship. Two game total pin fall matches underway from suburban Cleveland. Five strikes, six frames. Allie Leindecker from Worcester, Ohio, has a lead on Caitlin Johnson. 521 pins. Mike Irwin, the prior Game of Wycliffe, is here. Thanks to Mike and his great staff. It's been a fantastic event. It has been. And boy, I'm, my gosh, the, the, so many bowlers, so many young, young, great young players out here. And uh, they were quite gracious. She's a little, she's got a little, she's channeling her inner Norm Duke. Norm, Norm is a is a meticulous player. Doesn't go quickly. Norm is a good friend of mine. I'm not I'm not dissing him at all. He's a great player, but uh, she's a she is a little bit of a slower player. That's got a hurry. That got right off her hand, and she's happy just to leave the two pin. And everybody has their own tempo that feels comfortable for them. I was I was always very impatient. As we take a look at Pam Johnson, that's Caitlin's mom. Nervous mom, as well she should be. Proud, but nervous. But she said to us since the seventh grade, she always wanted to play for Randy Stoughton at Weber International. That's cool. Randy and I have been good friends for a long time. He was a he was a fine bowler on tour back in the day. Now an outstanding coach. Mm -hmm. Hurry, hurry. And it does. Randy looks happy, <laughs> at least for the moment. A little more about this event. More than 3,500 entrants from all 50 states. Boys and girls, three age divisions. 12, 15, and U20. Lots of scholarships awarded this year. Moving ahead now to the eighth frame. Shake off the split. Back in the pocket. Great shot. That's how you bounce back. Perfect. But the door opens a little bit now for Caitlin Johnson. This is all about pinfall over two games to determine our champion. I was a quick player, but I, I had a pre-shot routine. And she does she does the same kind of things with with her with her shoe and the different little idiosyncrasies. I used to to go through a, a little bit of a pattern, and and that's all done just to get yourself calm so you can make the best shot. Some people it takes five seconds, some, some people it's 15. <laughs> Wonderfully done. Looks like she might have made a little bit of a move to the left, squared up the line a little bit. We'll take a look. This ball is gonna go over about the 11 board, out to nine or eight, comes back high flush. We'll see if she moves in left on this left-hand lane as well. Last shot she threw was more, more around the seven, seven board, eight board at the arrows. Went long, came back, looked great, but left the seven ten. Gives it that practice swing, working on her, working on her arm swing. She did move. Well, comes in high, leaving three, six, and the ten. But she made. She didn't just move a little bit. She made a zone change, where she she popped in quite a bit. We'll take one more look at this shot. Never projected the ball far enough to the right. Cut it a little bit short. It drives in early, leaving the three, six, ten. Did you know more than 85,000 kids bowl in high school, but only 4,000 of them can find a college program? Collegiate bowling is growing fast, but there's still work to be done. To learn how to start a program at your college, please visit bowl.com slash collegiate.
and she chops the three off the 6-10 and gives Allie Leyendecker now a 35 pin advantage. And she can stretch that to 45 plus here. Absolutely, she's working on frame. She's got the hammer up. Wow, perfect shot, one three pocket. Dad Al very pleased, along with Tracy. Allie's head coach in high school, we told you about. Worcester, Ohio. Parents aren't smiling right now. They're they're concentrating too. They're they are focused. They, they know this is this is just the first game. There's a long way to go. Hurry up. Nice shot. Leaves a soft 10. Spare here, she'll be in the 220s. Hold on. She makes it just barely. It's amazing what what is so routine when you get to a match of this importance, televised match, the, the routine be, can become very difficult. Every ball we talk to in all three divisions, he told us the same thing. To get this far, I needed incredible focus and sticking with the game plan. It's the mental part of bowling. At this level, it's so critical. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, anyone that gets to this to this stage of a tournament or even, you know, in the top 15 or 20, they've got to have exceptional physical games. So it does become a battle of minds. Johnson understands the importance of finishing this game out. She can strike out for 190, cut that deficit down to 34. That's somewhat manageable. Needs to put that ball in the pocket. Which she does, but a 10-pin stance. Deliberate. Caitlin takes her time. Really different styles. Yeah. Ten pin. Takes care of business. She makes it. You know, I've never seen anyone with the pre shot routine where they aren't looking at the pins. That's that is uh, very unique. She's going to try another ball. I think that's an excellent move because even when she is hitting the pocket, she's not getting the carry that she's looking for. I like it too. End of the first game here. Down by 44 pins. Good opportunity to experiment a little bit, but it is about total pinfall. Caitlin, a big fan of Danielle McEwen. PWBA Tour star. Yeah, great player. Well, unfortunately, she didn't make a good shot. And you know, that's, you need to make a good shot so you can get information. And she pulled that ball. So, so a good lead for Allie Leyendecker. One game complete, one to go. Two game total pinfall championship, U20 junior goal on the girls' side. One bowler becomes a national champion when we return. Worcester, Ohio, not far from here, less than an hour drive. Quality first game, 224. And a quality start to the second game. And I think what what Caitlin is doing is she's moving further to the left, trying to get near the same tracking area that Allie's using and being very successful.
46 pin deficit for Caitlin opening up game two. A breakdown left and right lane. She's going to have to increase those strike numbers quickly. You see where she is in the lane. There you go. Quality shot to start out game two. Projected that ball further out to the right, but she's she's further left than she was when she first started. She moved into that into the zone that Allie's playing. It's a nice place to have the ball finish. With the blue coat, you can see Randy Stoughton, the her coach, watching and hoping. Looks like she is she's using two different balls, different ball in the right lane. She just switched to this ball for the left lane. Tickles him over. A different ball, it changes the dynamic of the way the ball rolls down the lane. One ball rolls earlier, ball goes a little longer. Nine strikes so far for Alley, trying to make it 10. She and leaves the 2 8 10. Leave. And just, I mean, it, it happens so quickly. There's a double for Johnson and Leyendecker. Her ball doesn't track up to the pocket. She leaves the 2 8 10. I'm not going to say it's completely impossible, but it's, it's almost. That's about all you can do. That lead of hers shrinks to 24. And Johnson has the hammer in the second frame. Now he's going to be a junior in high school coming up this fall. Math and science are favorite subjects. One wants to be a biochemist one day. Wow. Wow. Shakes off, the bad, shakes off the bad shot, comes right back with a great one. And good sportsmanship from both the ladies. Watch this six pin attack the 10. Bang. Always gives it three practice arm swings. Same routine. Same, exactly. Same routine. Hurry, Just hurry. This is a really good start. Game two leaves the 10 pin. Open for the first three strikes. Yeah, that ball got in that trap zone. It either needed to be a little bit higher or a little bit lighter. A little lighter, she probably would have powered the swish zone out. But it's just a 10 pin. Nicely done. Anyone's match. Yeah, 25 pins, seven frames to go. It's certainly anyone's match. And Leyendecker has to come back up to that right hand lane where she left the 2 8 10. It, you know, it's. You know, maybe she makes the right adjustment, the right shot, and gets right back in the pocket, or, you know, it could be the start of something else. Two, four, five for Johnson. Doesn't get the ball back up to pocket and leaves an uncomfortable. Spare conversion. Be interesting to see if she'll go hard and straight from the inside or if she'll try and hook at this. You see more of the younger players hooking at this spare, and, and then you watch you watch the top pros on tour, and almost all of them just throw throw hard and direct from deep inside. She's alping for the hook. Crosses over, makes the spare. I hate that spare. <laughs> Any way you can make it, that's fine.
Fourth frame for Alley. Pulled it. Didn't like it. Came in high. There's the reason. 3 6 10. Had a chance to go up by 38 pins. In this two game total pinfall match. Big lead. 46 pin spread after the first game. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm watching these two, these two women, and I, I, I find myself asking myself if, if Johnson's deliberate play is getting into Lyondecker's head because it looked Great like question. it looked like Alley even went faster in her last pre-shot routine than she has been, and she's been going quick. I, I, I that used to get to me because I was a, I was a very fast player, and the, and the, I always felt like. The slow players made me want to go even faster, which was certainly counterproductive. No problem on that left-hand lane. Great shot. Midway point deciding game here. Total pinfall match. Junior USA girls squad. Tremendous names there. Caitlin and Alley on the list. Congrats to them. What a great experience. Yeah, Alexis Snyder, Andy's daughter, is on that team as well. Good for her. Good shot. Cross Messenger the deck will not get just to it. In front of the 10 pin. Yeah. Looked like that messenger was going to capture it, but it was actually quite a ways in front of it, as we'll see on this replay. That took a right-hand turn and just missed it. Didn't yeah. It? Less than an inch. It's a pretty good shot for Caitlin Johnson. Got to stay within this range, though. 20, 30 pins. Have a shot to take over the match because Allie's been so solid. Just the one open so far. 10 pin. Has it. One of the down 29 basically means almost no mistakes are possible. Got to be solid. Big shot comes in high. Four pin wiggles the four pin, but it's not going to fall over. Well, I don't see Johnson missing this four pin and. If Lion Decker can come up and strike in the sixth and seventh, it's really going to put the big heat to Johnson. Sophomore to be at Weber International. Four pin, takes care of it. Down by 30 pins to Ali Leyendecker. Each trying for the U-20 Junior Gold Championship. Watching these fantastic bowlers in action. Up steps Ali Leyendecker, 16 years old from Worcester, Ohio. She's had problems in this lane the last two times. 2-8-10, 3-6-10. Works on a strike. Strikes again. Beautiful shot. 40 pin lead. <laughs> 40 pin lead for Lion Decker. Looking to stretch it to 50. Four she strikes in this game here, Marshall. Been good on this lane. And it continues. Up by 50 and firmly in command of the championship match. Cool and calm. Very impressive for a you know 16-year-old bowling against the more experienced collegiate player. Allie has the only 300 game by a girl in Teen Masters history. Wow. That's impressive. And we're seeing why with her incredible on-lane demeanor. Unflappable. Oh. 
Seventh frame for Johnson, works on a spare. And all 10 down. There she got the 10 pin to kick out. I was noticing as Johnson was getting ready to throw that shot that we take another look. Well, watch, watch the six pin. It's the one that's going to go into the sideboard, kick out that 10. Beautiful shot. And I was noticing Allie's mother had a little hint of a smile on her face as if to, she's thinking, I think she may just do this. First time we've seen the parents react like that. They've been pretty yeah. stoic back there. Yep. Randy Stoughton, the Weber International head coach. Hoping for a big rally in the last few frames. Caitlin's got to be near perfect, and now he's going to have to collapse. She'll need a little help, that's for sure. Eighth frame for Johnson. Hurry up. Leaves the two pin. Not looking good right now. If your family or friend, Caitlin Johnson. But I mean, making it to the telecast in any of the in the junior gold tournaments is bucking the odds. I mean, there are just so many participants, and there's only two. There's only two spots. Uh oh. Oh, it comes back. She she fooled me on that one, Dave. She looked down at her footing for a second there. Yeah. Wasn't sure, but all good on the single pin spare conversion. So up steps, up steps Alley looking for the four bagger. Eighth frame to go up by 60. She gets right to business. Hold on, ball. Wow. It does. 10 down. Held pocket. 60 feet to success. And, and she's, a 60 pin lead. That's right. And she. She smiled right to her mom. Got one back. A great shot. You're right, the 60 feet to success. That ball was left off her hand, but good speed. Held pocket. 10 in the pit. One more just for fun. Why not? Oh, this roll continues up by 70. Yeah, Isn't that's it? right. <laughs> Something that's, from my, that's my girl. That's my girl. <laughs> that was a great shot yeah. by our crew here. And I love the reaction of the parents. That's just. Al and Tracy are pretty happy right now. You bet. Well, that was perfect timing. Seventy pin lead. Best Johnson can do is 224. Good shot. And there's that soft 10 again. I can say from experience, it's a lot of fun to be sitting on the bench knowing you can't lose. That's a very good feeling. It's got to be. Oh, boy. To Johnson's credit, even though she's pretty much mathematically out of this, she sticks with her process, finishing the string. And it is official. Allie Leyendecker has won the Junior Gold U-20 Girls Championship. Congratulations to Allie Leyendecker from Worcester, Ohio. She's a champion here today. What a moment for Allie Leyendecker, 460-379 win. Junior Gold U-20 Girls Championship over Caitlin Johnson. Now we're set for the boys' championship match. David Hooper, Jr., Wesley Lowe, Jr., head-to-head. -head. Here's Wesley out of Palmdale, California, not far from L.A. One southpaw, one right-hander. With two hands, some big ball speed. And... Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> Eight pin doesn't fall over. Everything but fall down. We'll take a look at the pinfall. Everything's down. The, the eight pin's trying to fall, but doesn't quite get far enough over. It stands out. The last time we saw a two-hander from the left side on this pair of lanes, it was uh, historical. 
Solomon. Solomon. He was fantastic, wasn't he? Almost had a 300. In the U15 boys division, first ever repeat winner. Boys junior goal history. Here's David Hooper Jr. from Greenville, South Carolina. Same haunts as a guy named Tommy Jones. And Tommy they're both Jones. South Carolina Gamecock fans, not Clemson fans. That well, is clearly made to us. As an Oregon Duck fan, it doesn't make any sense to me anyway, so that's okay. Here's David. Well, big hand, but projects it too far down the lane, leaves the 1, 2, 4, 6, 10. The super washout. Graduated from Greenville Tech Charter High School. He's headed in the fall to Emmanuel College. That's in Georgia. A bowl on the team there. Slide. Oh. Tough oh. cover. And he can't manage it, so an open early in our two-game total pinfall championship match. BPA oil pattern. Marshall, break it down for us. It's the 41-foot pattern. Oil goes down to approximately here. Heavier in the front, a little lighter. Lighter on the outsides gives the opportunity for the players to have a little bit of room to the right and left, both on, on both sides of the lane. But if the shot gets too errant, as we just saw with Mr. Hooper, it's gone. That's got to hurt. Almost the same thing. Very fortunate. The two falls into the one, and he leaves just the 10 pin. But that's two shots in a row that were past the head pin. I mean, way past the head pin. We'll take a look another, another look at this. Lucky just to leave that 10 pin. And he's going to have to make some kind of a big adjustment because those two, first two shots weren't anywhere close. There's 10 pin. So he has a mark in his second frame. We've talked about it earlier on other, other telecasts. Too early to get too down on yourself. I mean, he's he's not proud, as you can see by his facial expressions, but it's, you know, this is game's just started. Game one of two. College Junior at Wichita State. Another strike, first strike of the game for, for Lowe. It looks as if Lowe actually puts, puts his thumb in the ball a little bit, but has the two-handed release. Parents are here. Wesley and Ann Lowe. They're from California to watch Wesley go for a national championship. Part of the Wichita State program. Coach Vatican, legendary bowling coach. Just extraordinary success that program's had over the years. Left the eight pin, came in just a little high on this lane. Not that time. Half pocket and just rips the seven pin out. See the two-handed form. Watch the four pin to the sideboard and bang, kicking out the seven. Third frame for David, trying to get things going in the pocket. Help across the deck. And down goes number 10. Much better shot, powerful strike. Head pin goes to the sideboard, takes out the 10 pin. Both these bowlers have a lot of hand. We'll take another look. Mr. Hooper, as it goes out to the right, slams into that pocket. 10 pin, excuse me, head pin goes to the sideboard, comes back and takes care of the 10 pin. Looks like he stayed with the same ball that he came in light the first couple shots with, but just made a little bit of an adjustment as to where he's starting the ball in the lane. Soft 10. A feature for the sport, road to the finals. See how these two great young bowlers got this far. Hooper Jr. over Ryan Halen, only by four pins, 409-405, and Wesley Lowe Jr. had a pretty much a route against Michael Martell. There's a 10 pin. Two game total pinfall championship match. Every frame, every shot is important. 
to see Bill O'Neill in the background there. The real deal, eight-time PBA Tour titles, former PBA Tour Rookie of the Year. One of the stars on tour currently. Definitely a thumb hole in this ball. I just don't know that he puts a lot of his thumb in. He's, yeah, it looks like it's in there pretty good, but he got the thumb in and the two-handed style. That's quite unique and quite effective. We'll take a look at Mr. Low. And he gets down pretty low, then really great knee bend, extends out through the ball. Ball goes down the lane and just rips him apart. You know, just the power has become prominent more and more in this game. There, there are still some some great bowlers who who do it with touch, but but for the most part, the game of bowling is a game of power. He's been a champion before. Many years on Team USA as well, Junior Team USA. Very talented young bowler. You're seeing some power just blitzing through the rack. More evidence of his power, the way that that ball came in so late into the half pocket, but still had enough drive on it to kick the seven out. Here's David Hooper, freshman at Emanuel College, to be in the fall. He's in a big hole early here, midway point. Another ball that went long. That's the same one, two, four, six, ten. I think he needs to make a ball change. I just, I just don't see. I just don't see that as a matchup that he's looking for. He's got to have some room to the right, especially with a big hand like his. Needs to get the ball in this area right here. Send the head pin into the 610. It is makeable. He could also put the ball on this side, go in between them and make it. And he does neither. And he's really, he's digging a hole for himself. There's his folks right now who are a little dejected, David and Kim Hooper. But, uh, hey, your boy's in the, he's on the, on the TV finals. He's off to a tough start, but it's just halfway through the first game. Although Lowe has got Does four strikes look in a row. Made and, any kind of a change. Uh, your boy's got a couple early opens. Boy, it's tough getting in this kind of an early hole. For all your energy, momentum, confidence. Need some strikes in a hurry. No, that's got you know, a break. he got it. That was a 210. It was a strike, but it wasn't a good one. Wesley Lowe Jr. from Palmdale, California, has a big lead midway through the first game. Two game total pinfall championship match. Boys U20 from just outside Cleveland, Ohio. More on the way. David plans to be a marketing major at Emanuel College in the fall. Season average last year, 234. Wow. His last year of high school bowling. He's quite a young talent. Nice looking shot. That's the first good ball reaction I've seen. He can still strike this game out for 199. We take another look at Hooper. This ball is going to drive back in. Six pin to the sideboard, kicks out the 10. Back to Wesley, up by 59. Wow, great pin action. <laughs> the six stands, but shrapnel on the deck. Well, he came in light on that lane in the sixth frame, made the adjustment, coming just a little bit high. Still enjoying quite a big lead. But he's only working at a 228 pace. If he were to, to strike spare out and, and when Hooper gets it going and punches out, it could be like a 30-pin game with one game to go. So a lot left to be determined. Got to feel good to be in the driver's seat. So when you had a big lead in a match, what was your mindset? I wish there weren't that many frames left. 
<laughs> was, it was not the proper mindset because I actually I did feel like that a few times and it cost me because I lost my focus. You just have to keep on making great shots. That was not one of them. There's a wide open split. That ball hooked early on Wesley, leaving the two, the four, the seven, and the ten. We'll take a look. The ball did not go long down the lane. This is makeable. It's just a bit, just the baby split with company. That's all you have to think about. Slide it over. Got too much of the of the two pin. Just gets nine out. So a little slip. And the yeah, and this really first time he's had any kind of problem with an open frame. Could it could be from from being in a, in a big position of power. This game could end up being 10 to 15 pins with one game to go. If Hooper can figure out a way to strike on this right hand lane. Made a great shot on the left hand lane. This is a key shot in the game for him. Not quite. Pretty good shot, but but not quite. Ball's trying to recover down lane, but it just doesn't get enough of the head pin. Shakes a lot of the pins out, but the four pin remains. High and hard with the start with the spare ball. Now 179 is his best score with striking out in the 10th. He's going to need to figure something out in order to get back into this game. Lowe is not going to just start opening every frame for him and get, getting him, putting him back in this match. Every shot matters. Total pinfall. Maybe it starts right here. Needs one. Crossing over, almost had a Brooklyn strike, and leaves the nine. Yeah, that was the lane that he, he got a good reaction on last time, but he cut that ball short, didn't get it projected out to the right, and ball crossed over so you really all that practice and and uh, it's still easy it's easy to get confused and he is right now all right 168 with the fill important for him to make a quality shot get in the pocket throw a strike build some kind of momentum for the next game you hate to just hand it to your opposition nicely done Good fill ball. Prior best finish for David. Fourth in 2014 at junior gold. Also 12th last year. I'm just wondering if if um, if there's a ball rep somewhere that that's guiding Hooper right now because it looks like he could he might need a little outside influence. Low coming off the open frame. We'll see how he responds here, Marshall. Same Not so shot. Well. And just for just when I said Lowe's not going to open every frame, he very well may open two frames in a row, and that 168 game will look a lot better against a 202. Same shot. He just, I, the lanes may be changing down lane. Oil's coming off the front of the lane. Two, four, seven, ten. He didn't like it because it's another open frame. Now yeah. hang on a minute. This. Match has changed dramatically in the last couple frames. It's just a 34-pin lead now for, wow. for Hooper and, or excuse me, for Lowe, and and Lowe has no momentum at all. So things could be really turning around for David Hooper Jr. Junior Gold U20 Boys Championship Game Two is on the way. Which was from Greenville, South Carolina. So this is it, chance to keep the momentum going. And you know, from being in a deficit. Marshall, you get that little bit of an opening. It, 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 it can it, change. It, it puts energy into your body. It, it, it 
makes you feel like maybe I do have a chance. But he, he needs to perform. Well, now he's got his chance. Let's see if David can take advantage. That won't be back. 258, very difficult spare. Well, I didn't like the reaction of his initial ball, and I'm not really loving the reaction of this one either. Looks like they're looks like they're both balls that go through the front pretty clean. I mean, I'm, the next progression might be to, to to take a ball that 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 bites bites a little earlier, move a little bit deeper on the oil. Lots of options for the bowlers. Tough spare. Chops it. Very difficult spare. That's got to be so discouraging. Leaves the five pin after Wesley had the two opens at the end of game one. Now we'll see if the momentum switches back again to Wesley low. It looks like Wesley sticking with the same ball. Um, his last two shots were were mirror images. Two, four, seven, tens. Hmm. Hard to do that. I see a little negativity with his body language and facial expression. Oh, he's Let's see how he does. He's got to be questioning himself. That ball he projected, projected that further down the lane. Loft. Actually lofted the ball yeah, down really the did. lane to try and delay the hook, which is one method of doing that. We'll take another look. We'll see this ball, the lay down, is much further out on the lane. Lofted it out there, I don't know, a good six to eight feet. But it still bit hard. Came in just a bit high, but a lot better to leave the six pin than to... Whoa! And he misses the you six. Just, that's just, that's a mental error. He is falling apart here. That is a big mental error. I mean, it's 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 almost becoming a match of, I don't want it, you can have it. But uh, you know they both want it. If badly. this were a basketball game, you'd be calling a timeout right here. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I you've got to stop there's no doubt this about it. negative momentum. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, the coach would definitely stop things. No timeouts in bowling. Got him. Right the ship. Got to do it now. Double wood. And he's got, the, he's got the highlight reel. Comes in high a few times. Now he's light. He's in between. And he's questioning He's questioning his game. And he's probably thinking, my gosh, there, there's over eight frames left in this game. And now I'm lost. And I, he went from a position of being a complete power. Important spare. He makes that. It's got to be, it, you know, you, you have to forget about it. You have to, you have to have a short memory, but but missing the, the six pin is it's just unthinkable. Sticking with his red ball. Still going. It's it. The ball's just going too long. And when he then when he when he squares it up a little bit, it goes Brooklyn. So it's it's you know it's not just a game of shot making. It's a game of shot making with the right equipment in your hand and being matched up. And and in my opinion, this young man is not matched up. I don't know. He I'm sure he has a couple of other balls. Does take care of the mark. 2018 junior team USA boys squad. David Hooker Jr. is in. So congrats to him. What a fantastic experience for those great young bowlers. Third frame. He did oh, move. Ten down. Made a little bit of a move in deeper, so it, it, it just, that was a great shot. It's, it's as if there's some out of bounds 
on the right hand side of the lane that he's fighting and when his ball gets to a certain point it doesn't come back so he moved in deeper on the lane this ball crossed over about the fourth arrow only got out to maybe 12 or 13 board didn't get to that out of bounds that could be his answer I'm it's the game how Wesley responds the game of a lot of options third frame is he back on track it's six pin down well, it goes friendly roll very friendly very friendly roll. He's still he's not he's not loving that reaction, but we'll take another look as this ball tracks in just a bit high. See if we can figure out what pin it was. And it's all too fast for me. Coming off that left hand side, the four pin knocks out the six pin. He knows he got lucky. He's still searching for that look into the one two pocket. Trying to go by 44 pins. That's a lot better. That's the one he's been looking for. He crushes the rack. Well, we'll see what happens on this particular shot. Is he going to move in deeper to try and stay away from that out of bounds like he did in the left hand lane? Got to try something. See where this ball crosses at the arrows. And kicks out the four and leaves a nine. Not as deep on that lane as he was in the left hand lane. We'll take a look. This ball's going to cross around 16. Yeah, right about 16, 15, 16 board. The other lane, he was closer to the fourth arrow, around 20 board. But he's down there, and I'm up here. He's the one fighting the lanes. There's the mark. We'll be back with more for the 2017 Junior Gold Championships right after this. We can head in our match, David Hooper, Jr. Sixth frame with a nine spare, and then the seventh with a seven spare. Here we are, head-to-head -head with Wesley Lowe, Jr. He can put it away with a couple strikes here in these next two frames. He's working on a strike. Just to go by 43, has really hurry. Yeah, that and ball pin count. It came in high, left 6-8 last time on that lane, so he made he made the adjustment he thought was necessary. The ball never did, does recover to get back up to the pocket. So both players right now are struggling. Pin action was pretty good, getting nine out of that. Left himself a relatively easy spare, the three pin, but this is the same man that flagged the six pin, so... Maybe I should just sit here and watch. I can't do it. I, I guarantee you he makes this. This is a focused player. There's just no way. I mean, the other, when he missed that six pin, I guarantee you his mind was not in the ball game. He knows where he stands. He's 33 pins up. He's got two frames to bowl. Biggest, the biggest junior tournament that there is. And it's 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 in his grasp. I mean, it's just right there for him. Hooper can't find the line. He's been struggling of late, but uh, he has he has control. With shots like that, he sure does. Great shot on the left hand lane. The right hand lane, he's he's pretty much lost on. He's going to have to bowl in that right lane right hand lane one more time. Hooper can strike out for 214, I believe. He'd still need some help from Lowe. But first, he's got to get a strike. Just, just really just lost. I mean, I've I've been there. It's it's it is not fun at all. I mean, you want to make it to television, you want to win, and you really, there's a party that wants to showcase your talent and show people that are there watching live and who are watching the telecast, you know, I know what I'm doing. And th these guys do know what, know what they're doing, but they're confused right now.
and it's really exasperating. You know, it's, it's one thing to struggle and have your other opponent just drill you, and it's another thing to struggle when, when your opposition is also struggling, giving you the opportunity to get back in the match. You just can't find a look in the You can't pocket. get it. Yeah. Tough. It's easier to lose by a lot. There are just not as many what ifs. Ninth frame works on a spare. He's in a big hole down by 34 pins. Four pin stands. Better shot, but still not. As I said earlier, you want to be light to flush in the pocket, not high in the pocket. You just can't count on those balls to strike. He's moved in even deeper around the 22-23 board, but the ball faces up early. Goes through the pocket just a little bit high, and the four pin remains. One ninety-two, the best Hooper can shoot. If I've done the math right, Wesley Lowe shoots 158. He can't lose. Has to go up by 45 pins. He's in ninth frame, game two. Two game total pinfall match. Two hander from Wichita State has 10 more down. That's enough. Struggle a bit at the end of the first game, beginning of the second game, then regained the look. And unfortunately, David Hooper Jr. just could never get himself in gear. No, couldn't he couldn't find it. And you know, all, all the practice he had prior to the to the TV show and just never could find the look. Even with even with with missing this, he would still shoot 180, and the best that Hooper could do was to to shoot 192, pick up 12 pins. It's just mathematically not enough. He has wrapped it up. Wesley Lowe Jr. is going to be the Junior Gold U20 Boys Champion in 2017. Congratulations to Wesley Lowe Jr. from Palmdale, California, winner in Wycliffe, Ohio today. Wesley Lowe Jr. from Palmdale, California. Goals at Wichita State has knocked off David Hooper Jr. 394-357 to win the Junior Gold U-20 Boys Championship. Randy Schicker, CEO of Ebonite International, handing out the trophies. As Allie Lyondecker and Wesley Lowe Jr. win the U-20 Girls and Boys titles here in suburban Cleveland. Congratulations to our winners of the Under-20 Junior Gold Championships. Join us Tuesday, August 15th at 8 Eastern for the Under-12 USA Bowling Team Championships. And also on Wednesday, September 6th at 8 Eastern for the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship. For Marshall Holman,